Scott workshop today and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about electronic ignition kits and using this NGV roaster I'm going to show you how really easy they are to fit. Now on some cars it is possible just to put the kit in with the distributor in place but on most cars the distributor is a little bit more awkward to get to and requires taking out as is in the case with this car. Um, but before we do anything what we're going to do is we're going to check the timing just to make sure that when we finish everything's going to be exactly the same as it was when we started. Now I've already set the timing gun up so it's all plugged in so all I need to do is just start the car up. I'll give it a quick rev and check the timing. Uh, you can probably see there it's 12 degrees. So when we finish we'll just set the timing to 12 degrees and it's exactly the same. Right. First thing to do is to get the cap off. Give ourselves a little bit of room. Take the HT lid out of the way. Now we're going to disconnect the low tension lead. Now we need to keep uh, keep our eye on that because we're going to be connecting one of the wires from the kit to that later on. So we just put that to one side and just remember where it is. Now. It is possible now just to take the distributor out and fit the kit, but on some cars um, it, it's really necessary to, uh, to uh, turn the engine over and point it towards number one. Um, as I said, it's not really necessary on this car, but we're going to just do it just to, uh, just to show you what we're talking about. So if we look at the cap, we can see that number one is in the top right hand segment, so it's about two o'clock. So we're going to turn the engine over, find the timing marks, with the rotor arm pointing at about two o'clock. So I'm just going to turn it over by hand. It's going to take me a couple of seconds just to pull it round. And when I've done it, right, can you see the marks there? They're just coming round. So I'm just pulling the mark round with my hand. So I'm just lining that's now top dead centre. And the rotor arm is pointing in the two o'clock position on this car which is number one cylinder here. So when we go back, it'll all be exactly as we took it out. Like I say, on this car it's got an offset key where it can only re-go really back in the way it came out, but some cars that have a gear, uh, it can go back slightly differently. So if we do this, it's just like a, a double check. Right, all I need to do now is to just take out the dipstick. Give me some bit of clearance. Undo this little pinch bolt. Okay, and I'll just pull the distributor out. Oh, and then, oh yeah, just take the, uh, the vacuum off. Put it back on there. Right. Right, that's the points distributor. We're just going to take it over to the vise um, and, and fit the kit. Okay, we'll just put it in the... Uh, here so we can see what's going on. Okay, well now the distributor is in the vice, it's probably a good opportunity to, uh, to uh, explain one of the claimed advantages, which is increased power, increased fuel economy, and explain basically how it does that in simple terms. Now to understand how, how it works, you need to really understand how the, how the points work. So uh, if I turn this round, you'll see the points opening and close. Now what that's actually doing, it's connecting the coil to ground and then disconnecting it. And what that does is, while the points are closed, the coil is connected to ground and is charging and creating a magnetic field. As soon as the points open, the coil is disconnected, the magnetic field collapses and creates a big spark. Now, the problem with points is, although they are actually quite reliable and they do work pretty well, their actual downfall is the fact that when they open and close, it's not instant. There's a sort of a little grey area in between where they're not quite closed, not quite open. Um, that's called the switch time. Now the slower the switch time, the weaker the spark. And therefore the faster the switch time, the more powerful the spark. So what the electronic ignition kit can do, it can operate a very, very fast switch. That switch collapses the magnetic field much, much quicker than points and creates a much bigger spark. Bigger spark allows more power, better fuel burn um, and better economy. Okay, so that's a little bit about the kit. Now we're just going to uh, we're going to now go ahead and fit one. Now I've got one out of the packet here. So when you open your kit, you've got a few little components in there. Some some have different 
components in them. Um, but basically, you get a kit, a trigger ring, and some heat sink paste. Okay, right now, the first thing we need to do is we need to just take your points and, uh, and your condenser out. So we just pull off the rope arm, we take out the points. Now we will need to reuse some of the screws. Like I say, all the kits are slightly different, so they all vary slightly in number of screws and number of grommets, etc. This one's quite straightforward. So we can take out all the points and condenser in one piece. Now the first thing we do is we get our kit. Now we just work out where it's going to fit. Now, often they don't fit in exactly the same place as the points, so it is necessary to try a couple of different options, but here it just goes there. Okay, so once we're sure we know where it goes and everything looks right, we just put it to one side and we need to just open our little sachet of heat sink paste. Now what just cut the end off with the, with the knife. Now what this does, it's a heat transfer paste. Because metal to metal doesn't give a very good contact, it doesn't transfer heat very well, we just put this paste on, which greatly improves the heat transfer and stops the module from overheating. So we just carefully place that, just put that in position. Now this kit here, although we took two screws out, this kit only requires one screw back in, so we just put that in there. And tight. Now this one's dead easy, it's just got a simple grommet that just goes on there. Well, I said quite simple. Right, now, next thing is to fit the triggering. Now, the triggering just fits all the way over the top. Now on that one, it went down quite easily with no problems. But you might find on some kits, it's actually quite tight because the cam sizes vary from distributor to distributor. If you find that it's a bit tight, just take it off, get a razor blade like that and just scrape the inside edge. And just keep scraping it until you get enough material for it to go on easily. Okay. If you find that your triggering is a little bit too loose, you can just put a little dob of silicone on there, which will go off overnight, and that will just hold it on nice and snug. But on this one, it's just right. You put the trigger ring on, make sure it's pushed all the way down. Put the rotor arm on. It's got a little locating lug just there. Push that all the way down. And that's really ready to, uh, to go back on the car. Right, take it out of the vice. We just take it over to the car. Now, if you remember, we lined up the distributor. This, this has got an offset keyway. It can only go one way. But uh, if you remember, we had the, the rotor arm pointing about 2 o'clock. The vacuum unit was pointing sort of up in an upwards direction. So if we just put that in now, that should just go straight in quite easily. So we just find a way through there. And just wiggle it around a bit for it to go back in. Okay, that's gone in. That's about how it was when we came out. Okay, you'll notice there's two wires. Okay, there's a black wire on this kit and a red wire. Now the black wire always goes to the wire. If you remember at the beginning we pulled off the low tension wire. The black wire connects to the low tension wire. Now you've got to be careful here because it's got a male uh, terminal with a cover to make sure that the actual terminal actually goes into the other side and not down the side of it. So just push that on there and just make sure the terminal has actually gone in properly so that's fine. Now we're left with a positive uh, wire. Now this goes onto the positive terminal of the coil. Now if you're not sure which one it is you really do need to check it with a voltmeter. Um, getting it wrong could damage the module. Now in this particular car I know, because I've already checked it, that the positive terminal, 
sorry, is on this side of the coil here, is there. Okay, pop the cap back on. leads off and I've put the cap on so I just push that back on. Okay that's that. Right. Okay, just come off there. right. okay you notice that I just connected the red wire here to the positive side of the coil. Now this car has a non-ballast 12 volt system if your car has a ballasted ignition, as many Fords do, for example, for any car from sort of 1968-69 onwards on a Ford would be ballast, this red wire here needs to be connected to a place like the fuse box, or if your fuse box isn't accessible, taken right through and connected to, uh, to the ignition key. Right, so we just pop the uh, thing back in. So all that's left to do now is really that that should now that, that's good enough to start. Now it is important to just to say that it's not possible to set the timing statically. You can only set it with a timing gun. Okay, we've set the, the rotor roughly towards number number one cylinder, so that now should be good enough to start. So we're just going to start the car and then just time it up. Oh. That's our first turn. We're just going to put our timing gun on the on the car. Now you can see the time is actually, although it's running, it's miles out. So I'll just pull it round to 10 degrees. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's about right. So all I need to do now is just put the vacuum pipe back on. And tighten the clamp. And there you go. It's as easy as that.